Hi friends, it's Shay. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are doing another plan with me. This one's for March. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with planning. I've already done the outlines and I'm just gonna be outlining with um, this Micron Pigma pen. So as always, I'm just gonna flip to my semester preview page take these out because I'm going to need it for planning out my march. March is looking a little busy. At the end of February, I felt pretty busy too, but in March I have a lot of midterms, assignments, and random stuff to do. So let's get on ahead with this semester. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is to do the, the monthly goal and the monthly page spread. Sorry, I just have to keep checking that I'm in frame, which is like worries me because what if I just like film the whole thing and I'm not in focus? <laughs> So I just got a random piece of paper so then I could just make sure that these are the colors that I want to work with. So I'm going to be primarily using this green and I need a neutral. So this brown, maybe this, nope, that's so orange. So I think for the spread, I'm going to be using these colors primarily. Then um, last month, I made a mistake of using, like I color coded the months. You can see here, but I made a mistake of like choosing colors that are too close together that it didn't mean much to me when I looked at this page. So this month, I think I'm going to be using colors that are completely different so I can make sure that I can actually glance at it and know what things are. So as you can see from this spread, my theme for this, um, my theme for this month is plant theme. And you can see from the strokes that I'm just randomly making that I don't want this to be too neat because I want it to look super abstract and like organic. So if you're new here, you might be wondering like, why is she using, or why is she decorating a planner and not using like a bullet journal? And it's because I find that when I use a bullet journal, I spend like way too much time trying to decorate it. Like it's not that much time, but it's like more time than I would want to spend. So I came up with this solution because I do need to track a lot of things in life. I don't need to, but I prefer to. So I find that if I have a very custom planner, it works really well for me. And I still want it to look super cute and different for every single semester or every single month. So my monthly spreads and weekly spreads are super simple, but I just decorate it every month. And this saves time because formatting on the bullet journal is a bit time consuming. So I love this theme that I'm going for, which is like very nature-y because I really love plants and I was talking to my boyfriend earlier about how I really miss 
hiking and stuff because a lot of hiking places are closed in Vancouver because of the pandemic. I didn't really plan out what I was gonna talk about with you during this planning thing, so I apologize if the topics are super random. I'm just talking as things come up in my head. And I think it does help to plan out your month in advance because I find that, for example, like March 1st, I have a midterm and if I don't look ahead of time, it just ends up catching up to me and it's like really stressful right now. Okay, so now that we have the decorations down, I'm just gonna write down my goals for this month. I found that in February, I was like, not very on top of my goals. And I, I'm i starting to feel like the goals that I made for myself last month were not really aligned with where I wanna go nearing the end of the month. So that is a good indicator to kind of rethink my goals. And I think it's totally okay to be doing that. Um, I think a lot of people don't follow through with the goals that they set on January 1st because obviously like your life changes, your values change and what you want out of life changes. And it's totally okay to change your mind. And if you're intentional about it, I think it's fine. I think when you force yourself to do things that you don't want to do, you're gonna end up burning out and you not wanting to continue on with the goals that you set. It's not just an indicator of you being weak. I think a lot of people have that misconception where if you can't follow through with your goals, you're like this weak person. But imagine like, think about like, the goals that you had five years ago, are they the same as your goals now? And most likely it's different. And that doesn't mean that you became weaker over the five years because you really didn't stick to your goals. As long as you're being intentional about why you may be stopping some of your goals, It's totally okay. Okay, so I think I'm done this section and I'm gonna move on to going into the weeks. One thing I want to do more in March is going out on hikes. Um, I really miss nature, as I said earlier, and I'm not really sure which hiking sites are actually open for public hiking, but that's something to look into because I really need to be out and about like as much as I love being at home, I feel like that kind of gets me down over time. Like it's nice to stay at home sometimes, but it's similar to like when I go on walks, I realize how much I love being outside. 
and I'm like, hmm, I should do this more often. And then I end up not doing that too often. That's why I need, if you guys saw on my goals earlier that I like set a goal to actually go on walks because if I don't set a goal to do that, I just don't think about doing it. And that just like does not help with my mental health because then I would just be staying inside easily. Like I could stay inside all the time. These Tombow pens are like kind of expensive or it's not kind of expensive. It's actually really expensive and I need to make the most out of it because um, whenever I make expensive purchases in life, I try to make the cost per use really low and then get like the most out of my money. And that's how I feel about like um, when I bought my laptop or like when I bought AirPods, I just um, use it every single day that like the cost per use is probably like less than a dollar. I'm, I'm sure it's like way less than a dollar, I mean. So, you know, if you're buying expensive things and you're not using it, you're wasting a lot of money and one thing I try to do when I buy expensive things is to just buy it secondhand because a lot of things just depreciate really, really quickly. Like right when you buy something, it just depreciates in price. So if you're buying furniture, for example, if you can find it online, I highly, highly, highly recommend it because why would you want to waste your money buying it brand new if you can find the same thing online? um that's used for much cheaper you know I want to add a section for next semester when I make my planner again to reflect each month because I find that I really like reflecting every single month, but if I don't have space to do it, I just like don't. So if I have a dedicated space in my planner to reflect every single month, I think that will help. Um, in February, I feel like I was less motivated to do things um especially with exercise which is like totally fine i try to get in movement throughout the day like going and like walking my dog and stuff but i didn't really dedicate like much time to actually do exercise that isn't going on a walk but i'm like learning to be okay with going with the flow of things. I don't think exercise is like one of those things where if you're not in the right headspace to do it, it's probably worse for you. And you should just like go and move more throughout the day, for example, instead of dedicating a time to exercise because I think it's really easy to make healthy habits like exercising for example unhealthy by being obsessive over it and sometimes I do get into that cycle where I feel bad for not exercising even though it's like one of those things that's like good for you so you shouldn't feel bad even if you can't get to it because things come up, you know, and you don't want to make doing something good for your health into like something that's bad for your mental health because you're like too harsh on yourself. And I know like my first year self would be cringing at me saying things like this because 
In first year, I was like very extreme with things and I would lose sleep. Like I probably got, I probably got, I don't know, around five hours of sleep every night. And that was to try and accommodate for all of these healthy habits. And I wanted to be like this perfect student and human being where I exercised every day and I studied for however many hours I studied for and to try and maintain a high GPA and like be this high performance student. And obviously that's not sustainable. And I had to unlearn those things. So going with the flow and being okay with change is a really important skill that I have learned and that I have to keep practicing. You have to remind yourself that the most you can do at the end of the day is your best. And you kind of have to remind that you're doing what you can with what you have. And even if it doesn't look ideal, just knowing that life is constantly going up and down and that you can't control a lot of things that happen to you, I feel like is a good reminder for staying neutral about your bad days or your bad days where you're not forcing yourself to be positive just because you feel like that is the move, you know? And even if you're having a day where you're not getting as much done as your typical day, to not label that as your bad day, and to just acknowledge that sometimes your body needs time to recover or sometimes people go through things, sometimes you're going through things and that it's okay to slow down and not get as much done. You are not a robot, you are a human and you can't be expecting yourself to perform at 100% every single day. That's just unrealistic and you're going to hurt your mental health by trying to live that way. So we are nearing the end of this video and I just want to leave you with reassurance that even if you don't get all the goals that you set out for yourself at the beginning of the month, you are not a weak person. You just being here in life is already so amazing and you don't need to force yourself to be a robot. So let's do a final flip through. I'm really excited about how colorful this turned out. Um, and I'm really loving all the plants that we drew today. So let's go to the monthly spread. Beautiful. So there isn't as much in my calendar, but each thing is actually worth a lot of my final grade. So this month I know will be pretty busy. And my goals page looks a little condensed then from February. And that's because um, I'm busy. So. I can't be having the same goals for every month if I have a lot on my plate. So I think it's a good reminder to adjust your goals as necessary. So that was it for my March Plan With Me video. I hope you enjoyed the style. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen my other Plan With Me's and tell me which one you prefer and I'll do that for April. As always, thank you so much for watching until the end of the video and I hope you have a sunny day.